Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And here we're going to look at matrix algebra. And we noted from chapter one that multivariate data can be stored in a matrix with N rows and P columns. And then the rows and the columns can be, you know, represent different things. And we'll be more specific as we go. But we also noted that matrix algebra is really the backbone of multivariate analysis. It allows us to talk and describe the statistical models that we're going to present later. Now, all these ideas will be presented using the R software, and all the code will be copied and pasted into the comments. So let's just jump right in. Let's look at matrices, vectors, and scalars. So a matrix is it's denoted by a bold uppercase letter and the three by two tells us the dimensions it doesn't have to be presented like this you can just say a if the dimensions are obvious but the three tells us how many rows and the two tells us how many columns so this is a three by two matrix now generically you can represent them by a11 a12 and the, the, the subscripts the first one is a row the second one is a column so A31 is the third row, first column. Now, this matrix, generically, you say it is size N by P. And, of course, in this example, N is 3 and P is 2. Now, a different notation, you can just say capital boldface A is equal to this. And then in parentheses, you put what's in that matrix. And then, generically, we were calling them AIJ, and I goes from 1 to 3, and J goes from 1 to 2. Now, notice that this took up a half of a line, where if we represent it like this, it took up three lines on this, on this page. So this is just a tighter, more concise way to uh, denote a matrix. Now, in R, we, we assign numbers we, we assign numbers to a matrix using the matrix function and this c is a reserve function in r it says what c and then in parentheses and then what's in it you put it in a vector so it's just a, a, a an array of numbers could be character though and then we put it in a matrix we want two columns by row false that means we go down the column with these numbers and then when we it knows that you know, divide how many there are by two, there's, you know, six entries, and we get this. Now, we can start picking off specific elements within that matrix. So that's what the square brackets means. And so the what goes before the column are the rows, what's after the comma are the columns. So this is A12, which is um, and the second column, which is 3.54. So this is the third row, first column. We get 18. So now, notice this is a, and it's an array of numbers. So we want the first and third row, first column. So then we it picks off these two numbers. Now here, if if it's blank, it means take everything in that. So we want the first row, every column. And then we get 23 and 3.54. Here, since there's no row number, it says take everything. And then we want the first column. So that's uh, 23, 29, and 18. It goes down this first column. Okay. So now a vector is really, it's denoted by a bold lowercase letter. And that's a vector. Now, a vector is just one column in, an array, in a matrix. So this is called a column vector. So 98, 86, 93, 94. So this is a vector of size 3 or 3, 4. And, and that's it. So generically, you, we only need one subscript, right, because it's one dimension. So x1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, you can write it as a row vector and sometimes we will so we just we take the transpose of that and transpose the function we'll explain in a later video but it basically takes these and then writes them in a row format so x transpose and that's called a prime some people will say x prime x transpose and that makes it a row vector now vectors in r um, 
remember we used the C function to create a vector of something. And so we want a vector of these numbers. So it's a vector of size 4. And we store it in A. That's the, the left arrow says assign this vector to A. And then it prints it. Now, since vectors are one dimensional, we only need one number in the square brackets to, to grab an element. So if we want the first element of vector A, we, we write it like this. The fourth element of vector A is this. And now uh, vectors have a geometric meaning. Okay, They're sort of points in P space. And I think an example will help illustrate this. So let's plot the vector. Uh, two, three. So this is a, a vector of size two, or you could say it's two dimension, or a, no, yeah, size two. And this is it. So this is the plot. I'll make it go one more. So now, so the vector is two comma three. And the way that you think about it, the first component is the x axis. The next component is the y axis. So if we had a third component, that'd be the z-axis coming out of the screen straight at you. But since it's it's a vector of size 2, we can plot it in 2 space. So it's 2, 3. And then we draw an arrow from the origin to that point. And that's the geometrical representation of a vector. It's, it's, it's an arrow sort of dangling or pointing out in, in space. Now, a scalar is, it's a lower case, non-bold letter, right? So in this case, so example, A equals 2. So A is a lower case. It's not bold. So we know it's a scalar. Now, again, to assign um, something to an, a, a variable in R, we use the left arrow. So... We assign the scalar 22 to K. So when we print it, we get 22. And uh, we'll stop there for a second. Now, the equality of matrices. So first of all, the matrices have to be the same size to compare them. Right? So what this says, if we have a matrix, we know it's a matrix because it's bold and capital. Bold and capital B. So matrix B. Then these two equal if each of the elements equal, and this is for all i and j. Okay. As an example, let's look at this R example here. So we create a matrix with three columns, and it's this. And then we create a matrix that's really the transpose of A. That means make this column or this row this column and make this row this column. That's called the transpose, and we'll talk more about that in a later video. Now, already, we know that A can't equal B, even though it's the same 100% identical elements, right? Because the dimensions of A is 2 by 3. The dimensions of B are 3 by 2. So you can't compare them directly. So it's it doesn't make sense to compare them. Now, let's create a matrix C that's actually the same as A. Right? And then let's create a matrix D that's almost the same as A, but that last element is different. So now, when we compare A to B, so the, um, the double equal sign in R means, hey, are these the same? You know, are they equal? And so it's saying, are A and B equal? And we get an error because they're, they're different dimensions, so you can't compare them. Now, we can compare A and C. And so it goes element by element comparing. It's true, 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 true. So these two matrices are the same. Now, when we compare A and D, notice that it goes through each element. And then when it gets to that last one, it's false. So we know that A and D are not equal because this last piece is false. Now, we can grab, say, vectors or you know elements of a matrix and then compare them. So let's compare these vectors. This says take row 1 of A, right, Because that and every column, and row 1 of D and compare them. And notice we get true, true, true. But when we compare the second row of A with the second row of D, it's true, true, false, right? That last element was false. Okay, so I'm going to stop to keep these at a good length. Um,
we have probably five to ten more videos on matrix algebra hope you enjoyed this i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye